so much, everyone, for joining another evening as we move our way into the third of the Sfirot, Mida number 15, which is Chesed Shibiti Feres. So this is a whole new world to explore, as with every Mida. We've already seen an echo of Tiferes as it was manifest in the Mida of Gvura, and now we're going to be looking at it from another vantage point. So we're spending the next upcoming week, the next seven days, exploring how each of the seven Midos um, are, can manifest through the prism of Tiferes. As I've pointed out earlier in the series, it's the way that, that in Kabbalistic thought, we see that each one of the Midos is, doesn't just express on its own, but they all kind of intermesh one with another. And so we find all these different kind of variations on the theme for each of the Midos expressing each other and themselves, right? There's a there's the nested aspect of each one. We'll see in a couple of days when we deal with Tiferes, it should be Tiferes. So today we're dealing with the notion of Chesed should be Tiferes. So first of all, just by way of introduction to the Mida of Tiferes, we've already talked about a little bit last week, is Tiferes translates as beauty, harmony, synthesis, and Yaakov Avinu is the archetype for the Mida of Tiferes. It's also called by two other names in Kabbalistic literature. It's known by the name of Emes, Titan Emes Liyakov, and is also described as Rachamim, the Mida of Rachamim. So in the system of the Spheros, Tiferes is considered to be a mixture of Chesed and Din. So it's the place that happens, it's the combination that happens when there's Chesed pulling in one direction and there's Gvura pulling in the other direction. There's God's overwhelming, overflowing desire to share life and to be, to be native. And on the other side, there's the demanding realities of living in God's presence and the incapacity for, for Ra to exist on that level of God's desire and the level of, of Keter, the the place of the Ratzon of the Ein Sof. And so we find Rashi opens up at the beginning of the Torah that on the first words of Bereshis, Bereshis bar Elohim, that what, what it implies by using the word Elohim is that initially Hashem wanted to create the world Bemidas Adin. That if, if it was up to Hashem, so to speak, then, you know, which obviously it was, if it was up to Him, then he, the world would have been created with pure Adin. And what that means is that there would be no room for the tikkun process of how humanity has free will and has the opportunity to work its way towards achieving the ultimate tov and rectifying creation through that choice. And what Rashi says is that he saw that the world would be unsustainable in the model of pure din. So hikdim midas rachamim v'shitva lemidas adin. So midas rachamim preempted it and combined together with Midas Adin, you know, utilizing the forces of Hashem's desire for Chesed, Olam Chesed Ibaneh, with this power of Din, that there has to be justice, there has to be some sense of reality to what's happening. And that's why in the second creation narrative, when you jump ahead to, the, to Genesis chapter 2, when we hear the second story of how Hashem created the world, it doesn't tell us Bereshis Bara Elohim. It tells us Elo Todo Shemayim Baretz Bihi Baram. This is the, the, the chronology, the generations, the development of the creation of Shemayim Baretz. Beyom Asot Hashem Elohim Eretz V'Shemayim. On the day that Hashem Elohim created Eretz V'Shemayim, utilizing both of these two Shemos, Yudke Vavke, which represents Midas Rachamim. This, this bountiful patience and, and harmony and beauty. And Elohim, which implies din. As we say, Elohim nitzav ba'adas kel, that uh, Elohim implies justice. So this idea of, of beauty as harmony is, is fundamental in the, in the whole system. And it's an important concept experientially you know, to be humans. Humans are the only known entity that experience the sensation of beauty. It's, you know, it's boggled the minds of, of scientists and philosophers for as far back as humans can research this notion that we perceive this quality called beauty. That there's, instead of just seeing things as they are, we see things as expressive of 
harmony. We see them as expressing something beyond, as giving us a glimmering sense of a world beyond. And so this concept of, of beauty and harmony uh, is an important aspect. We find that the Torah talks about the, the way that Torah itself is meant to be something that provides this to us. We say this in Davening, every Shabbos, Tehillim Yutes, Torah Sashem Tamima Meshivas Nafesh, Eidos Hashem Ne'emona Machkimas Pesi. We talk about the Torah as having this aspect of Tamimus, of holism, which is the Mida of Yaakov Avinu, Yaakov Ish Tam, Yoshev Oalim. Torah has this sense of completion, of taking all the disparate aspects together and unifying them, and it renews the soul. It says, Meshivas Nafesh, it breathes fresh life into a human being. When a person feels worn out, it's very difficult to experience beauty, to experience happiness for that matter. And that's why the Gemara says that there are three things, an interesting list of, of uh, ideas in the Gemara Brachos, Nun Zayin base that it says there are three things which settle the mind of a person, three things which calm a person's sense of awareness, and those are a beautiful voice, a beautiful sight, and a beautiful smell. You know, that these qualities of beauty have the capacity to kind of bring, recollect ourselves, to settle our minds. And this is why uh, even Rambam talks about, you know, that the health benefits of seeing beautiful things, taking walks in the, in the outdoors, there's something expansive about it. There's something that, that comes down that's not so harsh. The world isn't such a bad place after all, is the feeling that we get. So a person can be in a really bad headspace, but then they go outside and they watch the sunset and all of a sudden things feel all right. And you're like, all right, I guess I can do this again. Or you wake up, you have a miserable night and then you wake up and you just see the glistening grass on the lawn and the, the sun and how it kind of crystallizes on the on the fresh dew and you know as, it, as it's resting on the surface of the ground. And somehow the world becomes a magical place again. The, you know, the power of Tiferes and of, of, Rach, of Rachamim is that it gives space for the world to develop at its own pace. That instead of this excessive growth of life, and ex instead of the harsh reality of gvura and, and uncompromising standards, it allows for room for things to coalesce on their own and gives breath to, to the world and to, to the human being on their own to find that harmony and synthesis within themselves. And we find this, that Hashem basically loves life in the sense of Tiferes, that Tiferes comes from a, a deep place of love. The Ramchal actually writes that the entire notion of Hashem having an, a Hanhaga is all predicated on the Mida of love coming through. As we'll see in tomorrow's Mida, even the concept of Mishpat, the fact that Hashem judges at all, is a direct manifestation of His Rachamim on us. Because, you know, otherwise it would be less Din or less Dayan. That there would be no judge, there would be no justice. The very fact that Hashem, so to speak, constricts himself to justice is itself an expression of his desire for life and his patience with us and his desire to see us reach the ultimate tov. We'll talk about that in a little more detail tomorrow. And so that's why we say David Amalek writes in Tehillim, Tov Hashem Lakol. Hashem is good for every to everyone. V'rachamav al kol ma'asav. And his compassion, his love, is upon all of his creations. We also find this expressed in, in the Torah, a beautiful medrash, that tells us that you see from the very nature of mitzvos that Hashem wants us to be beautiful, that Hashem wants Tiferet to be a central aspect of how we experience the Torah. The medrash is darshaning the words in Shir Hashirim, which says, Chiko mamtakim v'kulo machamadim, describing this beloved husband that the wife in Shir Hashirim, the, the lover is looking after her long lost man. She says his mouth is sweet and all of him is desirable. So the Medrash says, Rabbi Chiyabar Abba gives an example. He says, you know, usually when somebody's got a job to do, to the extent that they get dirty is to the extent that they get paid, right? You know, so if you're being paid to build a building, the harder you work and the more you really, you know, get down to the brass tacks and, you know, get your hands, you know, get your hands dirty a little bit, that's when you know that you're doing your job right. And that's when you know that you're fulfilling your job as a servant. It says the Rebbe Chia Bar Abba, he says, HaKadosh Baruch Hu is the exact opposite. What does Hashem say in the Torah? He cautions us. Make sure not to make yourself disgusting. Al teshak tzu et 
Do not make yourself gross. I don't want you to be gross. Be- I want you to be beautiful. So, I want you. I want to give you a reward for the very fact that you're staying beautiful. I want you to be clean. I want you to be pristine. Nobody should should be rolling in the mud. No one should feel that they're being put down and made ugly by means of their avoda. That's not what avoda is supposed to be doing. And that's what the Pasuk means when it says, Kulo machamadim. The entire thing is full of desire. It's full of love and passion. Someone who's in love, they don't want their, their mate, their partner, to be become dirtied in the process of the lovemaking. Of course, they want each one of them to be elevated and to feel refined. And that's also what Hashem told Adam. The first thing that he told Adam Arisha in the Medrash says, that he made the entire world, says the Medrash, beautiful, incredible Medrash. You've probably heard me talk about this before if you've ever been to a Tu Seder, that uh, the Medrash Rabba in Kohela says that at the time that Hashem created mankind, so he took him on a tour of the entire Gan Eden, and he told him, Re'e Ma'asai, just take a look at what I've made over here for a second, all right? Take a look. Kama na'im umetukanim heim. See how beautiful, see how perfect they are, see how splendorous it all is. Everything that I made, I made for you. The beauty that you see is part of my desire to share life. That's the chesed shebet that, that beauty expresses life itself. That God's desire to share life is manifest in beauty. That when we experience beauty, we're informed about the nature of life itself. Beauty is not dead. Beauty is alive and well. Beauty is pulsating. It's thriving with the very force that Hashem has from the beginning, the Olam Chesed Yibaneh, comes through in a moment of beauty. And that's why we're called upon to elevate life into beauty. We find this idea in a, in a few different places where we see, first of all, the notion that we're supposed to try to unify the world and not just live on an island, but see the world as harmonious. And that, that recognition, I'll add, that recognition of the harmony of the world is an expression of personal beauty. Where do I see that? The Medrash Tan Chuma says that Avraham Avinu embodied this trait. It says that there was nobody in the world, and this is maybe is our transition from Gvura to Tiferes, no one in the world was able to be mechave in their lave and their mind in Tvila like Avraham Avinu. He was the pro of Tvila, mispalel par excellence. Where did this happen? So he said to Hashem, says the Medrash, Khalila lacham yasot kadavar azeh, that he went to Hashem when, when Hashem was planning on destroying Sodom. So Avraham came to him and said, God forbid that you should do such a thing. Ashafet kol aretz lo yaseh mishpat. Should, should the, you know, the ruler over the whole world not work within justice? Says the Medrash, Kevan shira'a kadosh baruchu, shahaya mevakesh schus, shalo lahachri vesa olam. Once Hashem saw that what Avraham Avinu wanted was not to save himself, not to save his relatives, to save the world. If you start with stone, first it starts with stone, next thing it starts with the entire North America. I mean, who knows what you're going to knock off next. Once he saw that Avraham wanted to save the whole world, immediately Hashem praised him by saying, The most beautiful, the most splendorous of all humanity, describing Avram Avinu. So that this trait of desiring the life of all of creation and not wanting a single piece to be pulled out of the system is what Avram Avinu is called the Yafyafita Hashem Ibn Adam for. And so this is manifests in practical terms as far as how we fulfill mitzvos. We're not supposed to fulfill mitzvos as a checklist. We're supposed to fulfill mitzvot in a way that expresses beauty, right? So we know the classic expression of this is the obligation of zekeli ve'anvehu, that, that in a mitzvah, we shouldn't just do the mitzvah in a dry way, we should fill it with beauty, that this is my God and I'll glorify him, I will make him beauty, his na elefana of the mitzvot. I'm going to beautify my mitzvot. They're not just going to be bland and dry and dead. If they're going to be an expression of that chesed, of true tiferes, then they need to be alive. They need to be filled with the passion of life. Maybe this is why the lulav hayavesh is possible. If you have a dry lulav, there's no chayim left in it. You can't perform a mitzvah if it's not filled with the, with the very flow of life. 
And so this is why the Gemara says in Shabbos, Kuvlam and Gimel, that every single mitzvah has to be with yeah, Sukkah Na'eh, Lulav Na'eh, Shofar Na'eh, Tzitzis Na'eh, Sefer Torah Na'eh, every single component of your Torah, which we say the Torah is Tiferes. That's why we put a Keter on top of it. It's expressive of Tiferes. Every last aspect of the Torah needs to be filled with Tiferes. It needs to have beautiful parchment. It has to be written in beautiful ink with a beautiful quill by a beautiful scribe. Every aspect of, of the embodiment of Tiferes, which is that Torah, needs to be filled with the beauty of life itself. And so that's why it's, to, just to bring this to a close, the, the beautiful comment in, of course, in the writings of Rav Kook, he wrote a commentary on the Agadatas in Shas. It's called Ein Ayah. It's, I think that they've only published it on a few track dates. I'm not sure how many he actually wrote on. Uh, but this is in his commentary on Brachos, where uh, he's commenting on, on what the Gemara in, in, in Brachos there says, that aspargus is yafa lelev. Those who did the daf might remember our asparagus drink, that it's good for the heart. So this is, he kind of uses the, the Gemara as a springboard. It's not really asparagus, by the way, there. But the commentary, he uses it as, uses it as a springboard to talk about you know, general ideas. He doesn't really like go into the details of each line of the Gemara so much. But what he says over here is that ra'u'i adam she yismach bechayav. A person is fitting for a human being to rejoice in his life. That Hashem created that capacity, that, that mida, engraved within the soul of a human being. And it's through that, it's through that inner simcha that a person can arrive at the radiance of wisdom and the proper performance of, of ma'asim. And he says that ha'emtsa'im was simchat nefesh the mediary, you know, the way by means of which a person can arrive at happiness of the soul, it's by the sensation of the glory and beauty of the entire creation. As he says that a person has to affix his heart in its proper place, in order that he is able to feel those sensations in his heart of the beauty of the entire creation. And it's a lengthy piece over there. I would encourage you to check it up and read it. Uh, it's worthwhile. But just to kind of bring this all together then, that Chesed Shebitiferes tells us that we need to see the life within beauty. That beauty speaks of harmony, it speaks of synthesis. It tells us that Hashem is patient with the world and wants to see us come into ourselves, wants us to be sensitive to the world as a whole, like Avram of was, the Afyafita of Shemibnei Adam. And it starts with a recognition that the world is alive, that every single detail is so expressive of beauty, of Hashem's initial desire to create, that it fills us independently with that sense of beauty. That if, the, if this is what it means to be in a world, that's why the incredible bracha that we say when we see a beautiful thing, we say, Shekachalo be'olamo. That uh, this is what it must be like for Hashem in His world. You know, that Hashem sees the world through the lens of pure beauty. There's nothing not to love. That the entire process from mitchila v'ad sof is filled with an, with an ava and a rachamim and an openness to seeing us through our process from the beginning to the end. And it's all filled with a love of life itself. So those are some thoughts for beginning our journey into the week of Tiferes finding chesed, finding life within beauty, finding life within ourselves, and allowing each detail of our own lives to express the beauty that Hashem is looking for in creation, and not to sell ourselves short, to realize that the place that we find inner happiness begins, as Rav Kook says, with the sensations of the beauty of, of the world as a whole. So thanks so much again for joining. It's a pleasure to see everybody as usual. Have a good night. In terms of how this is a progression and evolution from the week of of Gevura, mm. how would you see it as as this being like the next step in the, in the process of why we would work on this next? I think that that when a person utilizes the meat of Malchus Shibikura, and you start recognizing the the Giloi Kvot Shemayim and everything and you're seeing the world as an expression of God's will, 
what you have to be drawn to, the kind of the, the, the next step innately in the process, is to realize that the world is, is thereby beautiful. And it's not just that it's, a, that it's a kind of a bland manifestation of Hashem's will, but it's a beautiful thing. It's a harmonious thing. That not only does each detail express the Gilui Kvot Shemayim, but every detail together creates a harmony. It's like uh, the song that Oad shared with us yesterday, that the entire world sings the song of Hashem's Malchus. So there's a, there's a harmony in recognizing the Malchus of the world, which is arrived at through the powers of Gvura, through you know, making that judgment call and assessing, utilizing the power of Tefillah. But as we saw with Avraham, Avraham utilizes Tefillah to recognize a need to see the beauty in the entire world. And that's the Yofi within Avraham. So it's kind of taking it to the next level. It's, it's not just that the entire world is a Giloy of Hashem's Malchus, but that therefore the entire world is imbued with life. Nothing is dead. And everything in having that life within it is also thereby beautiful and is also in harmony with one another.